For years, Ecuadorans have been struggling to keep their heads above water in a troubled economy. Eight months ago, only four out of ten people had full employment. Now, with the pandemic, the job market has collapsed. Susana Bayas takes us on what she calls a depressing trip down memory lane. This is where she used to run a modest but successful cafe with four employees. This was a bustling area of Quito where people gathered on weekends. There were lots of tourists. This was my coffee shop, which I had to close. I feel terrible sorrow when I see all of this. All of us entrepreneurs who put our hopes and dreams and energy into this in order to live. Now we're struggling just to survive. The few who are still open, like Roni Coronel, don't know how much longer they can hang on. I know loads of people who are unemployed and who are forced to update their contracts and work for half or 80% less if they're paid at all. An astonishing 85% of Ecuadorans are now either unemployed or in precarious jobs, like Paulo and Fernanda Freire. Both lost their jobs as journalists and are trying to survive selling blood pressure meters, soap and face masks. They have two children. As a family, we need roughly $900 for the house, food and pensions. Now I can't manage to even make 200 I don't know what we'll do. Ecuador can't access credit because of its enormous foreign debt. Unlike in other Latin American countries, the government has continued paying creditors, leaving almost nothing for emergency aid for the needy. Economist Alberto Acosta says it's a structural problem. The paralyzation of the productive apparatus, the pandemic, the drop in the consumption, and the government's recessive economic policies have created an extremely dangerous cocktail, which is reflected in the employment figures. And in a country where massive demonstrations over the withdrawal of fuel subsidies nearly brought down the government last year, it's not just the economy, but the governability of Ecuador that's now at stake. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera.